Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. We've got a bit of a tongue twister on the name of this one. This is the Acasa M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD to USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2 aluminium enclosure. And if you don't believe it's an aluminium and you want to call it something else like aluminium, let us know in the comments just below. But these retail for £66 roughly and we've got links in the description just below. Before we go on to the main video, if you would do us a favour, click that like button, subscribe, click the bell as well. And that way you'll get notifications of new videos and live streams we do. Again, doing all these things helps support the channel and helping to support the channel allows us to release more videos, better quality videos and more content exclusively just for you. So let's have a quick look at the box. As you can see, it says Acasa. You've got the actual device here. It's sort of a silver or metallic design on a black box with sort of a cobweb design. Behind it, it's got a QR code which takes you to the Acasa website. It says it's USB type C. I'm hoping it comes with a USB type A adapter as well, which makes it more convenient. It, come, it works at 20 gigabits per second, and we've got the name there, which I'm not gonna read out all over again because it's a bit of a tongue twister. Otherwise, on the box on this side, it does say on there it's USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 two two or 2x2, two two, depending on how you wanna do it, and you've got that 20 gigabits per second on there as well. So it says type C and you've got a UASP support as well, PCIe SSD, and again, it tells you it's USB 3.2 type C. On the back, it tells you a bit of information about the enclosure. So you can see you've got the, the back part there, you put your SSD in, a thermal pad there, and you put the top on, and there's a couple of screws that screws the end on. It's pretty simple. So basics is to this, what it is, it's an enclosure, so if you've got a really high-end SSD, so something like an NVMe-based F uh, SSD, which runs at maybe 1,000, 2,000, maybe even 3,000 megabytes per second, you've got the option of obviously plugging it into here and using it as an external device so you can use it and copy information onto it and then take it to another PC let's say from home to work or vice versa or store some games or even just use it as a general storage device or a large USB memory stick maybe a little bit larger than a standard USB stick but still you can fit a lot of storage capacity on there and very fast a lot faster than what you get on a standard USB memory stick it also works with uh, type pins on here it tells you about the five pin and then the five and the five uh, on there so that's a uh, m and b if i'm right so it'll work on both of those on there but i've got more information here so let me just go through the specifications as we said it's usb 3.2 gen 2x2 aluminium enclosure for m.2 pci nvme ssd uh, the external interface does say it is type c that's usb type c and the this is keyed and compatible with M key and two times B plus M key SSDs compatibility, PCIe Gen 3, Gen 2, Gen 1, uh, times 2 times 4, NVMe SSDs of sizes of 2280, 2260, 2242, 2230, uh, that's the actual measurement size, so the one what says 2280 is generally the standard size, but you can get some smaller ones. Transfer rates is basically, if you're using on the USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, uh, is up to 20 gigabits per second, but obviously if you're only using it on a USB 2 connection, and obviously there's not many USB 2 uh, type C sockets so you probably wouldn't need an adapter uh, it would be as low as 480 megabits per second obviously it's solely dependent on the socket you're using it on and also the SSD you decide to put inside uh, so it's pretty straightforward works on anything Windows 7 and above uh, Mac 10.8 or later and you've also got uh, uh, Linux uh, or Linux depending on how you want to pronounce it 2.6.24 or later 
Okay, let's have a look what's in the actual box. So first of all, we got four plastic bags or three plastic bags and an anti-static bag. Are these all really needed? Maybe one or two of them, but anti-static bag, this came in the anti-static bag, which obviously it's an aluminium enclosure, so they shouldn't really need anti-static. Uh, it comes with a bag anyway. Why can't it couldn't come in there? Saves a bit of the packaging, save the environment, save you money as well, and so forth. Uh, also, you've got a manual here, which tells you how to fit it together most of the information is on the back of the box anyway with a small diagram uh, but uh, they've got a QR code on the box why you can't just scan the QR code and it'll take you to the manufacturer's website uh, and show you the latest instructions and videos of how to put it together as well as any software if there was any I don't think there isn't in this case uh, but it would have been a lot better to do rather than including a manual uh, which generally most people will chuck away once it's been used once if they even use the manual so it would have saved again paperwork environment and money and makes things cheaper both ends right so on top of that we've got a nice little bag to keep it in so that's nice not sure if most people will use it but you do have one it's not it's a nice little bag draw string on it keep it nice and tidy and keep it somewhere safe which is pretty good you've got the cable which is USB type C on both ends there is no adapter for USB type A which is a shame because if you want to plug it into a USB type A device you've got to go out and buy yourself another adapter which it wouldn't cost them too much to add one in the box in all honesty some other devices I have seen do come with them um, because let's put it this way not a lot of devices have still got USB type C on them yes a lot of smart devices do uh, but not every laptop does not every PC does um, so we're still stuck on a lot of devices using standard A connections so it would be nice to have an option of if you've got let's say a laptop with USB type C you can copy stuff onto that and then you go to your PC which doesn't have a USB type C you've then got to get an adapter and you can't plug it in basically until you've got that adapter so an adapter would have been a nice inclusion on top of that you've got a thermal pad which will go on top of the NVMe SSD when you've bought one and this little plastic thing I'm guessing that's going to be the clip which holds the SSD in place let's open it up so it's the first time I've opened it up so let's have a look well actually let's have a look at the casing first as you can see on there it's got a serial number which has been stuck on it's also got a model number on there as well recycle and CE mark on there and on the other side it's got the manufacturer's name which is a CASA it's got a nice sort of a ribbed effect on there is probably the best way so it obviously helps it dissipate the heat on the end you've got a plastic bit and on this end you've got two screws so this is basically formless design so or should I say screwless design or tools design or however you want to do it but to open this up you just basically screw these things and they are a bit tight so anti-clockwise that's one out and then the other one same again so that comes out and I'm guessing that will then slide out yeah that end bit comes out and the bottom end you can see it's just started parting away I'm guessing you just give it a good push yeah you push it that way and it opens up obviously if you read the instructions which I know most of you are not going to do then it'll show you a bit more information there is already a clip in there for the uh, to hold the SSD in by the looks of it anyway uh, but it does seem that they've uh, included an extra for you just in case so if you're not sure how this is going to fit you'd basically go out and buy an NVMe based SSD like this one this is an xpg one which is a data you don't have to specifically get one from them you can get other ones lexar orteal kingston whatever you want the basic is you just slot it in there push down and then you should just turn if it's going to this little plastic thing at the end around it's a little tight to be honest get it turned all the way around Oh, it's not wanting to turn all the way around oh. there we go so that's locked it into place so you do have to give it a bit of a, uh, a pull round uh, but once it's in it's in now you've got the obviously the SSD inside that you do need to put the thermal pad on so generally it's usually a sticky so you have to peel the thing off of one side that then sticks on top of the SSD like that and then you peel the other part off 
and there we go. So what happens then is when these are together, that pushes against there and then helps dissipate the heat through the casing. So now we need to put it back together. Uh, so to put it back together, let's do it this way around. You turn it upside down, slide it in. There we go, so that's in. So now we need to get the plastic cap on the end. I'm guessing, let's have a look. So it'll have that bit sticking out, so it'll go that way around. He says. So it'll go that way around, and then you get the two screws, again, thumb screws, just screw them in. Don't go over tight because then if you ever need to open it in the future, it'll be very difficult to open because there's no way you can open that with a screwdriver. You'd have to get pliers on it if it did seize for any reason. And that's basically it. And then you just get your, obviously, cable, plug it in there because it's USB type C. It doesn't matter which round it goes. And then you plug that into your laptop, PC, whatever device it may be, which takes a USB type C connection and you're up and running. So you've got yourself a high speed external drive which is going to be a lot faster than a usb drive and again you can make it whatever size you pretty much want so if you want a two terabyte a four terabyte nvme ssd in there you can stick it in there if you want a really high speed one let's just say like a samsung evo or something like that you can put one of those in as long as it's an nvme type drive you shouldn't have an issue so we tested the device, we found that it managed to do up to around about 2,300 megabytes per second on the read and on the right we got around about 2,150 which is very fast but again this is all dependent on the SSD you use. Obviously if you use SSD which only got a maximum read speed of 1,100 megabytes per second you're only going to get 1,100 megabytes per second read speed. So the max we were able to do we used a uh, a Samsung Evo drive which is capable of well over 3000 megabytes per second and it only worked at around about 2250 to 2300 megabytes per second which is still pretty good especially for an external drive again it also depends on the USB ports you're using as well so if you're using a standard USB 3 port you're going to get a lot slower speeds if you're using USB 2 it's going to be even slower but one thing to bear in mind the device does not come with a type A connector or converter so they are, it will only fit in a USB type C port as standard so that's the small sort of I don't know probably about four or five millimeters sort of wide sort of connection they're not very big um, and you really want to watch out for that because obviously if you have got a device which hasn't got any USB type C connections or you want to connect it up to a device what has only got USB type A then you're going to struggle. So I would suggest you get an adapter and I would recommend that Acasa actually include these adapters in the box. It would be very helpful and would also score them a lot higher on the review as well if they did. But saying that, it's a very fast product. It does everything it says on the tin. As we said, high speeds, it's portable. You can put whatever type drive, whatever size you want in there pretty much. So it's all singing and dancing. And as I said, just that minor fault of not coming with an adapter or an additional USB type A cable so you can plug it into most other devices on the market. But otherwise, we do recommend this product. Thank you for watching this video everyone, it's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.